Madam Vice Minister, Mr. President of CAST, Nobel laureates, learned friends and friends of learning. It is a great pleasure, finally, to be able to open this Nobel Prize dialogue. And I wish to thank President Ok John Yu and his team at CAST for the partnership and the hard work in uh, getting us to this point. And I said finally because this Nobel Prize dialogue was planned to take place in 2020. And what has happened in the world during these years um, really puts our topic, the future learning, uh, into context. A pandemic resulting in profound disruptions of life and society, economic and social conditions around the world, a war in Europe, with grave global repercussions in terms of food, energy, and economic security. And a climate crisis which is uh, no longer only a scientific fact, but a fact of life. These are examples of an unpredictable, fast-changing world. So when we talk about the future of learning, uh, we need to realize that the future is coming fast at us. Take the many climate and, and nature emergencies that we have seen in virtually every country around the world this very year. They teach us about a future coming faster than even science had predicted, and much faster than society has realized and responded to. When uh, world leaders met this last week in uh, New York at the UN General Assembly, there was much talk about a polycrisis a multitude of problems now facing humanity. And scientific efforts, scientific achievements, and scientific collaboration are essential in order to solve these problems. And because of the speed with which that poly crisis is unfolding, the interplay between science and society and decision-making in society needs to be much speedier as well. So in a paradoxical way, future learning is really a future which we already need to learn from. We need to try to take lessons from the imminent future to uh, apply those lessons to the crisis that the world is facing. Or in Alfred Nobel's words, to apply those lessons to the greatest benefit of humankind. And that's why the topic before us today, the amazing panels before us today, with uh, Nobel laureates and other experts that will shed light on future learning, is uh, so exciting. And I look forward today to see efforts to the greatest benefit of humankind unfolding on this stage. Thank you very much. And next, please welcome Uk Jun Yu, President of the Korean Academy of Science and Technology. Good morning, dear laureates, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great honor to welcome all of you, and I'm very pleased to announce that the Nobel Prize Dialogue Seoul 2023 is being held here today. Nobel Prize Dialogue Seoul had its first event in this auditorium in 2017, which was six years ago. Since then, many things have been changed. In particular, the COVID-19 pandemic, lasting for over three years, has changed much of our lives. In the meantime, the President of Korea, as well as the Prime Ministers of Sweden and the United Kingdom, have all changed. The Korean Academy of Science and Technology and the 
Nobel Foundation also have new leaders of their organizations. On the other hand, there are several special things that have not been changed. The passion for education in Korea has not been changed at all. Nobel Prize Dialogue Seoul 2023 is still being held here today. Laura Spretchman and Adam Smith, who are in charge of this event, are also here with us. If any of you who attended the 2017 dialogue are sitting here today, again, it can be the most valuable, unchanging. Traditionally, education in Korea has been regarded as the largest asset that parents pass on to their children. It has played an important role in remarkable economic growth of Korea. However, the education system has become excessively competitive and focused mostly on university entrance examinations. This can sometimes turn into a serious social issues. Therefore, I hope that today's dialogue on future learning will provide a valuable opportunity to lead our education system into the right direction. In this regard, I think this topic will bring about the most effective results when it is dealt with in Korea. Today's occasion with the five Nobel laureates and renowned experts is profoundly meaningful and such a gathering would not have been possible without the Nobel Prize dialogue. I was told that many students came here as audience, including medalists of the Science Olympiad, young first authors who have recently published outstanding research papers, and students from Science High School for the Gifted. I believe they will be our future science leaders for Korea and the world. And these expectations makes me much happier. I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to all of you once again for participating in this important event. And I sincerely hope that the Nobel Prize Dialogue Seoul 2023 will be remembered as a priceless experience for all of you. Thank you very much. And now, to give some celebratory remarks, I'm delighted to introduce Sung Kyung Cho, first Vice Minister at the Ministry of Science and ICT. Science and technology move the world. Today, I'm thrilled and grateful to be the presence of Nobel laureates who have demonstrated the most profound influence in the world and scientists who are creating the beautiful influence. The Nobel Prize uh, is one of the most prestigious awards in the world. It's not an award. It symbolizes the potential and expectation of how much further humanity can progress. The research, discovery, and passion of the laureate offers us new perspective um, and wisdom, inspiring us to make the world a better place and times. Through our conversation with the Nobel laureate today, 
I believe we will face many challenges in understanding what our research and development goals should aim for and what we need to explore and learn. This is a precious moment marking another meaningful beginning for us. Science and technology profoundly influence everything from our daily lives to global economy and societal structure. The influence of science technology is increasingly powerful. Science and technology have become not only a pillar of the economy, but also an absolute weapon in this diplomacy and security. There's a new order is forming whether nation with shared value collaboration in research and development and share their accomplishment. Consequently, the degree of the global collaboration has become a benchmark for measuring competitiveness. Therefore, scientists must not only conduct research, but also consider the impact of the, these advancement on society. The evolution of the science and technology is a double-edged sword and perhaps even more complex. As the influence of science and technology grows, scientists must possess deep insight and a high sense of ethical and societal responsibility about the change their research may bring to society. We shouldn't simply uh, pursue what's possible in technology, but strive for what's right technology that benefit humanity. Recently, South Korea's science and technology, as well as our scientific community, are preparing for revolutionary change to leap forward anew. We are well aware that the Nobel laureate and great scholar have never ceased to challenges even in difficult and unfamiliar circumstances. I believe this is precisely the path that South Korean science and technology must pursue. The South Korean government will establish a bold and innovative system to enable these researchers to take on challenges and continue to do so. Today, at this event, I am confident that through the dialogue of the Nobel laureate, we will reaffirm our hopes for the future of humanity and society, drawing inspiration on how we can make the world a better place. I also anticipate that the inspiration from today will spur wave of innovation in the Korean science and technology sector and the, our daily lives. I hope that the efforts of Nobel laureate and greatest scholars from South Korea to share thought and embark on new challenges for a better future when and today, but will continue on every possible occasion. Thank you once again to everyone who prepared for this Nobel Prize Dialogue Seoul 2023 and to all attendees. I respect Professor Joachim Frank, George Smith, Michelle Levitt, Dr. Harbert Mixia, Professor Konstantin no uh, Noberslov, and all the greatest scholars from around the world. Science, technology, and innovation and are our dream, and the power of create our future. Thank you.